Great next panel. Um, so we'll start to talk about visions for the future. We've sort of set the context for you. We've heard from um, Kurt Spalding on the environmental side. We've heard examples from other cities around the world. And now we want to talk about visions for the future. So we've invited three uh, speakers for this panel. And we basically went, wanted to hear from multi-generational family-owned businesses. So they have been in business before the Harper started its revitalization. So they have a long-range perspective. These companies also are on the cutting edge of what the future is for Boston Harbor. So let me just very quickly introduce, I'm, I'm gonna cut the intro short because I want you to hear what they have to say. You don't need to hear me, you should hear that. Roger Berkowitz, the president of Legal Seafood. Scott Haggerty, the general manager of Boston Towing and Transportation Marine Construction Company. And Al Sonoma, who's the general manager of Boston Harbor Cruises. Um, we're going to go in alphabetical order. We're going to talk a little bit about what their family businesses are and what their vision is for the future of the 21st century. Okay, Roger. Uh, thank you, Richard. Do you have a microphone? Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 narration 
And I remember when we pulled back in the court, you know, the senator was saying, boy, I, I thought I was a great student of, uh, of, of Massachusetts history. And I hadn't realized how much it was really out there. So I, I'm thinking one of the things that can happen through cruises and whatnot is that perhaps uh, what took place uh, in Boston Harbor, uh, whether it was uh, you know, the, the, the storm at Bunker Hill, whether it was the Custom House, uh, whether we talk about cod, the importance of cod played, and, and, and even the fact that it, uh, the part it played in triangulated trade and, and slave trade, you know, that's history that, that people don't often uh, learn about. And, and even if you do sort of uh, read about the history book, you, you tend to gloss over it. With your experience at first hand, I think that that would be uh, a great opportunity uh, you know, for for. The other thing is, you know, we, we see this as, as, as entertainment. You take a look at the entertainment that, that, that Boston presents. We go back to these, the 70s, I think, when we had the uh, uh, you know, bicentennial, uh, you know, with the tall ships coming in, the kind of excitement that that created. And then, uh, you know, again in 2000, uh, when, it came, uh, when, when the tall ships came, and, and the throngs of people, and the fireworks uh, that came down here, very, very exciting. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting when you know when, when you think about going on vacation. How many people think about uh, making plans around the water? You know, I, I, I think many of us do. Some of us, some of us, the negative ion excites and, and create a sense of well-being. Since learning that people drink a lot of water, which is, <laughs> which is okay. It's a both moderation. Um, uh, but uh, a few years, uh, I think two years ago, what Joe Fallon brought in the uh, Volvo races. You know, really an exciting event. Uh, this year he's doing the extreme races. Uh, uh, fireworks are slated to come in here. Um, I, I think that uh, it's just a huge opportunity. A year ago, uh, last year, the, the previous uh, Memorial Day weekend, I was down here, and it was literally a ghost town. Everyone can sort of vacate it much other places. This year, on Memorial Day, the place was clean. It was exciting. And I think people are naturally migrating. So the more things we can put down here from a, an entertainment uh, standpoint, I, 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 I think will be uh, great for everyone. Uh, now, another thought. Uh, I know that the mayor for a long time has wanted to do aquaculture. Uh, uh, you know, in the Harbor Islands and around it. Thing up with that it, it is not a uh, uh, you know an, an odd thought. I, I think 20 years ago, it might have been 25 years ago, uh, harvesting anything from Boston Harbor. Uh, some of this takes but uh, uh, I, I think today it actually has some legs. And there was a, a, a person, I remember Kurt, uh, Cliff Gowdy from uh, uh, MIT, was with a project on raising finger uh, in the harbor. Uh, and he wanted to raise uh, half. I think it, it was just. Unfortunately, at that time, it was just a bit too costly, so he ended up abandoning that. But to, to the mayor's credit, he did not abandon the thought of, uh, uh, of, of, of aquaculture. And I think uh, talks have progressed, and one of the latest things I think that is very viable uh, is the opportunity, I think one of your, your next week we'll be talking with the board, is shellfish. Uh, and, and, and one of the things, whether it be oysters or clams, soft shell clams, which is the divine. Uh, there is an opportunity to uh, to grow shellfish uh, in Boston Harbor and in the island. So, you know, I'm thinking, well, the Boston home of the bean cod plant, uh, you could uh, uh, you know, have some fun with that. But uh, there, there's just so much potential. And now that the infrastructure is there, and, and, and Vivian, I think you've created a great template for how things should work and how accessibility uh, should be. I'm very, very excited. I do this all the time. I'm Scott Hagen from uh, Boston Public Transportation, and we are a, uh, I am a fourth generation family member of the Reinhardt Transportation Companies out of New York. I mean, displaced New Jersey. Resident uh, two and a half years ago, I moved up here with my family to take over the marine construction aspect of our operations here. Um, 
Um, we're a family company. We have our house out of Staten Island, New York. And uh, we founded uh, Boston Cohen back in 1932. My great grandfather founded it. Um, and it's evolved into, again, a family company. One uh, of those companies is Sinesco Marine in Rhode Island as well. So I represent us now at our Boston first family member to come to Boston. So I'm kind of fresh eyes on the harbor. And I'm certainly uh, involved in the harbor every day. Um, we work out of East Boston. And uh, as far as the future holds for what I've seen going on in the of the Boston area, our East Boston Yard is one of the oldest yards in the country. It's called the Donald K. Shipyard. And we are currently rehabilitating that yard and keeping it as a full service uh, marine yard. And there's a lot of potential in what we're doing um, on the East Boston side. It's kind of interesting. I met Michael before the meeting here. And I've done a lot of work in New York. So seeing the parallels between what's going on in New York and Boston Harbor very interesting. Um, I see East Boston as an evolving to uh, Hoboken, New Jersey, um, and hope to see that happen somehow or another. Uh, we have development opportunities on both sides of the river, but uh, our East Boston yards are, are very interesting opportunities. Um, so we continue to develop and evolve with what's going on in the harbor and make it accessible for industry as well as future potential. Um, and uh, there's just so many things to talk about with multiple companies. I mean, when it comes to green energy operation, we've actually talked with Kate Wynn to uh, take interest in developing uh, wind turbines and doing the towers out of our lab location. But uh, I'm not sure getting all of those things considering what you can have to see my boss and Robert. That's pretty much um, well, my name is Allison with Boston Harbor Cruises, and I'm fourth generation with the company, and we've been in Boston Harbor for 85 years. So I have a unique perspective in that my family has always been literally dependent on Boston Harbor and its development. And if you were fortunate enough to be there last night, we saw photographs from 1975 all the way through to the present day that really demonstrated the most important changes to my family that the harbor has seen. And it would really be remiss if we didn't mention them and say thank you because almost all of the people in this room were instrumental in those things. Uh, first of which being the development of Daniel Hall and the aquarium. Uh, the second being the cleanup of Boston Harbor, which really turned everybody's focus on the harbor to the natural resource that it really is. And then lastly, the depression of the central artery. <clears throat> so we're still in a phase where we're really celebrating our good fortune and all those things that have just passed. But moving forward, we have two opportunities. One for us is transportation, and the other side is recreation. Um, Scott and Roger had, had reiterated a few things that I wanted to say. On the transportation side, we're very excited to see the developments in South Boston, uh, East Boston as well. To me, it's going to be a huge opportunity, and especially if we look at development in East Boston with an eye to mixed use, uh, residential, work, recreation, because East Boston to us could be the new Hoboken like it is in New York. So you could not only have people commuting into work to Boston from East Boston that live within walking distance of the ferry terminals, but you could also have a real legitimate uh, reverse commute, people going to East Boston for restaurants, museums, public parks, open space, and the same thing with development in South Boston. Uh, the final you know, piece to the puzzle for water transportation in Boston Harbor, when we get to that point, would likely be intermodal connections, so that transportation, water transportation, is no longer limited to where people can walk 12 seasons out of the year from the ferry terminal, but we can branch out and take people either by bus or by train or some other intermodal connection to other places in the city. The other thing that we're, we're highly focused on is recreation. And Roger had mentioned, in my opinion, Boston has two great natural resources in the harbor and one national resource. And the national resource being all of the great revolutionary history sites that you can see along the water 
and we're fortunate to have the Boston Tea Party and Museum being developed on the South Boston waterfront. So what we would love to see would be as many people visit Boston by the water for the history as do visit the Freedom Trail. Our other natural resources are the Boston Harbor Islands National Park area. We would like to see as many people visit the park as as many people visit Boston Common. The last resource we have, and to me it's probably our most spectacular, is Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. We have one of the most amazing populations of cetaceans and humpback whales, which are just superstars out there. So I would love to see as many people visit the sanctuary as have gone to Franklin Park Zoo or the aquarium or some of our other facilities here in town. And what's exciting to me about the possibilities to increase visitation on the water is, is the wonderful new neighbors that we're getting all throughout the city. And whether you're in South Boston or you're in downtown, if you're on the water, we're all part of the same community. So as Roger mentioned, programming is huge and it's gonna become easier with, with more people to work with. So we have things like this Saturday, uh, the Boston Harbor Parade of Lights is gonna be from 8.30 to 10. Uh, every passenger vessel in the harbor pretty much and a bunch of recreational vessels are all lit up. And we're gonna parade through Boston Harbor, uh, ending at the new restaurant facility at Liberty Wharf. Um, so we'll have things like that, the extreme sailing, Volvo Ocean tall ships, of course. I would love to see the tugboat musters come back. Um, and now, now that we're all together, we can have more funding for more programming, more exciting programming, things like fireworks, uh, festivals. So that, for us, you know, are the two things that we see on the transportation side and the recreation side. But, but more than that, we're just thrilled to be where we are today and very thankful and very fortunate and very excited about where we can go. take a couple of questions before we go into the break and they, they've agreed to stay for a few, at least a few minutes longer so you can ask them questions one on one during the break. But any general comments or reactions? Oh, come on. I, I know all of you in this audience. There are no shy ones. Yes, please. Oh, yes. Um, I'm from the Back River Watershed Association and I love an exciting harbor. Anything on the water, whether it's frozen or not, I'm there. And there's something about connecting with water that I think is so fundamental with human beings. But as I hear the excitement about the development, I've taken many cruises, I've seen the whales, love the activity on the harbor, come in on personal boats to enjoy the scenery. I have to wonder what the extent of utilizing those natural resources are. And I just want to make sure that people are aware that there's a natural heritage to that. And resources are meant to be exploited. But we don't want to disregard the natural heritage that is out there. The Boston Harbor is an ecosystem, and things live there. And I hope that we find the balance of respect for that environment. When I first got the notification about this uh, meeting, Boston Harbor has been dramatically with me, but I hit Boston in 1980. But we're dealing with issues on the south shore with the herring run that's being impacted by development. And I bring that to your attention because perhaps the next step in looking at the Boston Harbor is to step one level out and see what feeds the harbor from an ecological standpoint. So we, the respect for the natural heritage can provide the sustainability, the utilization of the natural resources. Thank you. Excellent point. Thank you so much. So the idea of looking just beyond the inner harbor of Boston Harbor to remember our national heritage and the uh, much of what happens in natural, 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 natural heritage. heritage, sorry, natural heritage, is that we need to be sure to be mindful of the fact that what happens in the inner harbor is very much influenced further out. Well. And what happens at the expense exactly. influence, because it's not just the harbor, it's the waterways that you can take trips up from the back river, coming up from the north shore. There's other ways that you can leverage the recreational tours by starting in Boston and exploring those waterways, the interest in extreme sports and the boating that's associated with those types of trips and expeditions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I agree with that as well. Other comment? Did I see another hand in the back? James? Allison, you, you set some pretty ambitious goals about getting people out onto the water. Um, 
Do you have a sense of where we are today? Uh, do you have a feel for how many people are going on commuter boats or on sure. harbor cruises or out to still wet your bank? I can, I can tell you what our numbers are, uh, personally coming out of Long Wharf. We carry 2 million people a year, uh, and that's almost exactly split in half between commuters and recreation. Uh, the commuters were bringing 5,000 people a day uh, into Boston from Hingham, Charlestown, and Winthrop, and I know there's very uh, successful, important services coming out of Hull and, and Quincy as well. So on a, on a busy Saturday at Long Wharf, we'll take 10,000 people out onto Boston Harbor, be it sightseeing cruises, uh, whale watches, the aquarium also does wonderful whale watches next door to us. And I know the Harbor Islands are extremely busy as well. So it's a much different world uh, than it was when I was a kid uh, in the 70s. It's, it's incredibly dramatic.